I went in for an audition and then, um, I what was that like? Tell us about that. Um, I mean, you know, it hadn't been revealed that it was a campaign. So nobody, not even my agent knew it was a campaign. Um, and, uh, you know, there was just one line in the initial campaign. And so, um, I, I went in and they just kind of had me walking back and forth. I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I had a whiteboard eraser that I was using as a cell phone and I just had to sort of like walk around the space hmm. and say the line over and over and over again. And then, um, that was that line, what it, what it is that you're famous that you're known for or did it change? Yes. It changed? Yeah, okay. no, no, that was the line. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and I had just done a play where, I, this is why I think I got it. Okay, so I was the last appointment on the last day after they'd seen about 1,500 people in about four different cities. Jeez. And they were like, we're, they, they were like, let's just see a couple more people. And, um, and, I, and I think I was the last appointment on that last day. And, um, and for whatever reason, I, you know, there, I think there are a lot of variables and criteria that, you know, that surround something like this. And there are a lot of people that have to agree. And then there's test marketing and all that stuff. But it was for whatever reason, I think I, I checked more boxes than the person before me. And um, so I think that was a huge part of it. But also I, I had been doing this play where um, called The Adding Machine, um, which is basically, it was basically this sort of like expressionistic play where I was, um, speaking my thoughts out loud and, and I was talking to the person next to me. So I was in this like, um, I was in this space of, and it was all non sequiturs. So it, it, you know, you couldn't mess up. It was like, you know, it, uh, it was, it was really hard to thread the logic of all of this together in a way so that you could perform it in, in a natural way and keep it in your head. Like theater of um, the absurd. Like, uh, yeah, it, it, it actually is, an, I think it's expressionistic, technically speaking. It was written in the 20s in the U.S. by Elmer Rice. And, um, uh, and it has surrealistic aspects, but it's really more expressionistic. Um, but the upshot is that I, you know, I had this really intense scene that I had worked on all summer for this theater festival in, uh, in September, August or September. Um, yeah, it was right before 9-11, actually. And, um, and so I was in this headspace of, um, I think it was already innate in me to sort of like listen when I was actually really asking a question, like listen for an answer. And I, and, and then, and then go back to the thought, like, and, and for whatever reason, I think I brought some of that, um, that energy um, into the, into the simple little audition. And so there was something about, I was really asking the questions and that question, and I was really listening for the answer. Hmm. Um, and so I was already kind of like, for whatever reason, warmed up for that one minute task. And so for whatever reason it came, the, the, the thing came naturally. It could have gone to anyone. It could have gone to someone with better abs. I mean, it, <laughs> but, it, but I got it. For Sounds like reason. things just lined up. You're in the right space, everything kind yeah. of like. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the, the rest bears out. I mean, it was successful enough that they just kept doing it, you know, for years and years and years. So um, I, you know, I acknowledge the enormous role that luck plays in it, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm not one to take credit for something that, you know, is not mine. I did not create the character. I was not, you know, there were a lot of people who did all of that. But I do think there's no denying that I was the right person for that job. Um, and that I can admit.